Hey everyone, welcome back to Easy Coding. Today we are going to discuss about final part of AZ900 exam theory. So with this session we are going to complete all the concept of AZ900 exam. So first we are going to discuss about Azure Active Directory. So this is your identity system in Azure which means that here you can define users and groups and provide them permissions to your resources. So here you can also define external users who can access to resources in Azure. So this is Azure Active Directory. So let's move on to the next one that is multi-factor authentication. Yeah, from the name itself, it's an authentication mechanism. So you can also enable multi-factor authentication for users. For users, those who are accessing these resources, we can set multi-factor authentication. So here users need to be need to use an additional mechanism in addition to the username and password to log into Azure. So this is nothing but when we access Gmail or something, uh, we will get other multi-factor authentication that is other authentication mechanism other than the password and user thing. So that is called multi-factor authentication. Sometimes it may be an OTP or uh, sometimes it may be an approval. I mean, we have to approve from the mobile. So these kind of things are multi-factor authentication. So we will see what is uh, in this one. So here users need to use an additional mechanism in addition to the username and password to log into Azure. So you can also make use of conditional access policies to create conditions to allow or deny users to log into Azure. So we can allow or deny uh, users into the Azure. So other security related aspect GDPR general data protection regulation. So uh, we will see what is GDPR that is this is a set of rules that helps EU citizens have more control over their personal data. So this is for EU citizens have more control over their personal data. These points are all important. So let's move on to next that is under this complaint schema organization how to ensure that personal data is gathered legally and under strict conditions. Here we have to ensure that personal data is gathered legally under strict conditions. So also organization have to manage the data in such a way that it is protected from misuse and the next one is ISO. This is International Organization for Standardization. We all heard this ISO, right? So this is an international body that is responsible for setting international standards. This is an independent non-government organization. It consists of members from around 160 plus member countries. All these points are important. And the next one is the NIST that is National Institute of Standards and Technology. So this is an organization which looks at US innovation and they do this by looking at measurement of science standard and technology. So we have learned three that is the first one is let's start from the first one that is GDPR and the next one is ISO and the next one is NIST. So let's move on to the next one that is Azure Blueprints. So this is a service that allows you to define a repeatable set of Azure resources. So Blueprints is used to create re repeatable set of Azure resources. The definition of Azure resources can adhere to an organization standards, patterns and requirements. Using Blueprints, you can orchestrate the deployment of resources such as role assignment, policy assignments, Azure resource manager template that is ARM templates and resource groups. So using blueprints, you can orchestrate the deployment of resources. Some difference between Azure blue, blueprint and resource manager templates. That is, you can use blueprints to upgrade several subscriptions at once. And the relationship between blueprint definition and the blueprint assignment is reserved. Next one is the Azure Security Center. That is, this is an infrastructure security management system. And you can use this tool to improve the security of your Azure based resources and on on premise resources as well. That means private data as well. I mean, private resources as well and Azure resources as well. So uh, please uh, note this point. This is important. You can use this tool to improve the security of your Azure based resources and on premise resources as well. And Azure Security Center has inbuilt support for services such as Azure Virtual Machine, Function App, Azure SQL Server Databases. You can also allow Azure Security Center to give recommendations on what to do for on-premise Windows and Linux servers. So this is important. We, uh, we can uh, allow Azure Security Center to give recommendations on what to do for on-premise Windows. You have to know that on-premise Windows and Linux servers. 
on the servers you need to ensure you install the microsoft monitoring agent and this service also helps detect and prevent threats at an infrastructure layer this is important okay so this service also helps detect and prevent threats at an infrastructure level so we will see the next one that is azure ad identity protection so this service this is a service that help detect suspicious actions related to user identities this this helps add more security to the sign ins to your azure ad account so this service can help detect the following that is users with the leaked credential sign ins from anonymous ip addresses and uh, sign ins from infected devices sign in from ip address with a suspicious activity sign ins from unfamiliar locations so all these things can be managed in the azure ad identity protection so let's move on to the next one that is azure ad privileged identity management this is a service that can help manage control and monitor access to important resources in your organization and with this service you can provide just in time privileged access to azure ad and azure resources and it provide time bound access to resources using start and end dates that is time bound and enforce multi factor authentication to activate any role and get notifications when privileged roles are activated and conduct access reviews to ensure users still require the roles and the next one is important one is the azure firewall so this is managed cloud based network security service that can be used to protect your network resources this is important this can be used to protect your network resources it has features such as threat intelligence this can filter incoming request and alert or deny traffic from or to to malicious ip address and domain so it has features such as threat intelligence so this can filter incoming and incoming request and alert or deny traffic from or to uh, some ip address and domains so the firewall itself has built in high availability it can scale automatically based on network traffic flows so firewall is firewall has high availability here you can ensure that all traffic from machines in an azure virtual network flows via the azure firewall service is important okay the next one is azure ddos protection this service helps protect against distributed denial of service attack this is probably the biggest security concern for companies when they expose their applications to the internet so we have two plans for azure ddos protection that is first one is the basic one so this is uh, automatically enabled and this continuously monitors traffic in real time and looks at a mitigation of common network level attacks so this is automatically enabled and monitors real time so the first one is the basic one and the next one is the standard this is a paid plan so but you get many benefits by using this standard plan and here you can get real time attack metrics and diagnostic logs via azure monitor you can get help from ddos experts you during the during a live attack so we have two plans basic and standard and the next one is azure information protection this solution that can help an organization classify and protect its documents and emails by applying labels sorry i forgot to highlight this one these are important one this is a solution that can help organization classify and protect its document and email by applying labels azure information protection important point and the labels can be applied automatically by administrators through the use of rules and conditions the labels can use visual markers on documents to tell the user the classification of the document please note all these points so now let's look at the next one that is azure advanced threat protection so this is a cloud based security tool that can be used to identify detect and investigate advanced threats compromised identities this service can be used to protect identities and credential stored in active directory so this service can be used to protect identities and credentials stored in active directory when monitoring your on premise that is your lock i mean your uh, private active directory domain controllers you need to install an azure atp sensor on the domain controller it can be 
it can be used to identify and investigate suspicious user activities and advanced attacks now let's move on to the next one that is Azure keyword this is important one it helps you perform secret management here you can securely store your tokens passwords certificates API keys and other secrets so this is an important point about Azure keyword helps you perform secret management here you can securely store your tokens passwords certificates API keys and other secrets you can use this service to create encryption keys you can use these encryption keys to encrypt your data you can also easily provision manage and deploy public and private secure sockets layer transport layer uh, ssl and dls certificates all of these secrets and keys are safeguarded by azure using industry standard algorithms key length and hardware security modules you can also monitor all the keyword activity by enabling logging that is an important point you can also monitor all keyword activity by enabling log logging the logs can be sent to an azure storage account to an event hub or to azure monitor logs the next one is the azure policies this service can be used to create assign and manage policies so this service can be used to create assign and manage policies that is Azure policies this is an important point you can use these policies to ensure that resources in your Azure account remain compliant with the corporate standards and service level agreement so this is used to make sure that our Azure account is compliant with the corporate standards and the SLA that is service level agreement you can use inbuilt policies or even define your own policies and the next one is the role based access control that is this can be used to assign access to resources in Azure for example if you want to give access to a user to manage virtual machines in your subscription you can use role based access control then they can access the they can manage the virtual machine roles can be accessed at a different scopes subscription resource groups and resources so let's move on to the next one the next one is Microsoft privacy statement to understand the data that gets collected from Microsoft when you use their products you can refer to the Microsoft privacy statement the next one is Azure services lifecycle this is an important one so Azure keeps on updating their services from time to time they will add new features uh, deploy newer services from time to time so for services in public preview you can actually view from the Azure portal itself you have to note that uh, you can actually view from the Azure portal itself for what the for services in public preview for services in public preview you can actually view them from the Azure portal itself I'm stressing this point because it's an important one that's why and these services are available for review for all customers this is important and the next one is note that it is not advisable to deploy resources based on the services to your production environment because there would be no SLA attached to the service this is an important there is no SLA attached for public preview and you can view view services in private preview here you need to request Microsoft to preview these services also keep a note that any services that go out of support Microsoft will give you at least 12 month of prior notification this is an important one next one is Azure support plans uh, this is an important one uh, so you can find out this from the uh, Microsoft website so this is the link azure.microsoft.com and support plans and the next one is uh, Azure service level agreement this is also very important one so Azure normally gives around 99.9 percentage of SLA for most of their services so support plans that is basic uh, standard all those plans you have to be familiar because uh, you will get a definite question from Azure support plan and Azure service level agreement so please make sure to understand Azure support plans and Azure SLA if you are new to my channel please care to subscribe my channel for latest updates so with this session we have completed the theory concept of AC 900 exam so in the next video we will go through the remaining real time questions of AC 900 exam and we will see the rest of the OOPS concept as well so thank you for watching we will see you in the next videos